What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out Top FC. I'm Alberto again with another Calcio review. We're going to take a look at the results that went down in the midweek fixtures and the stories and news in the aftermath to those results, okay? Leading up to this weekend's fixtures, which we will preview every single match, and I'll give you my picks. Only put money down at your own discretion, though, all right, on my picks. But let's get started without any further ado, going through the results through the fixtures in midweek. Juventus defeated Lecce 1 0. This was a very very drab affair and Juventus fans are not going to be happy with the amount of confidence coming out of this game leading up to this weekend's fixture against Atalanta they would want a bigger response something more solid something more impactful coming from their team showing some type of dominance against Lecce Lecce was toothless in this one they weren't allowed any opportunities really they finished with two opportunities none of them on target Chesney didn't have to make a single save but in the end it took a scrappy scrappy goal for Juventus to get the victory but at the end of the day the victory is all that counts and those three points were massive given the other results okay so uh, again at the end of the day just the three points count Empoli scored their first goal of the season getting their first victory of the season at home against Salernitana Salernitana is going to be furious as they continue their winless drought to start the season and that was a very very winnable match for Salernitana so Empoli again first goal first victory still are going to be struggling in a massive massive uphill battle for this team Napoli Napoli had one of the strangest Tuesdays okay a massive massive storyline involving their star striker Victor Osiman and it came from two TikTok videos from Napoli's official account all right so apparently the account put one video following a TikTok trend it, it, their their media in general is very very childish in my personal opinion when it comes to TikTok but they followed a trend it seemed to be mocking Osiman for missing the PK all right in their nil nil draw before that um now then they followed up with another video, another video that called him a coconut, which in certain parts is considered a racial slur. Now, this is just a massive, massive bomb, and he took it to heart. He was choked. He deleted all of his media posts involving Napoli. His agent threatened legal action towards Napoli all right and this was crazy Napoli ended up putting out a uh, an official statement which to many seemed like it wasn't even an actual apology so very very strange whole scenario nonetheless Napoli played Udinese the day after on the Wednesday Osimhen scored Napoli beat Udinese 4-1 and Cavara, Cavara Scalia finally scores again for Napoli. So still amidst this weird, weird, chaotic disaster with Osimhen, they got the job done. Both those men scored. They look good going into the weekend. Hopefully they can build some type of momentum off of this. As far as uh, Osimhen goes, his agent has said it doesn't look like they are going to be taking up any legal action against Napoli. But you would have to think that a renewal is highly unlikely at least where it stands right now they'll have to mend that relationship working forward okay then Lazio you have Lazio getting the job done against Torino winning 2-0 Lazio will continue this Jekyll and Hyde type role I think for the season to be honest if they can gain some momentum off something we will see but they weren't able to do it off a big victory against Napoli so time will tell Monza and Bologna in a nil nil draw okay Monza not doing as well as they would have liked after such a positive end to the season last season and they were beating the big clubs last season so they're going to be a little frustrated with their start. Cagliari and Milan. Milan getting the job done 3-1 as expected. Cagliari will struggle mightily this season. Atalanta edging out Verona 1-0. But honestly, this could have had a lot more goals for Atalanta. Again, that trend is picking up where their offense looks to be getting a lot of opportunities. Inter and Sassuolo. Sassuolo get the victory 2-1. Inter fans, the ones that were claiming that was not a red card against Berardi, against Juventus, 
Oh, you would have hoped that it was because he ended up being the killer for Sassuolo, giving them the big three points against Inter. And this changes things at the top as now in the standings, you're going to have a tie between Inter and AC Milan and Juve right there, two points behind, okay? Frozenone and Fiorentina to a 1-1 draw. And Genoa absolutely thrashes Roma 4-1 in a match that now has apparently Mourinho's job on the line, okay? And there are already rumors surfacing about Antonio Conte coming in to take over the job. And Antonio Conte spoke highly of Roma back in 2019, and now those interviews are starting to creep up again where he spoke very highly and said, at some point, I will be the coach at Roma. Will that time be now? We have to wait and see. But this is the worst start to a season for Roma and a worst start for Mourinho ever so they've got a massive massive hill to climb and redirect the ship but uh, it is sinking quickly over there and fans are getting restless all right so that wraps things up as far as the midweek fixtures go and that gives you a little bit of the storylines leading into this weekend now we'll take a look at those matchups coming up this weekend Torino against Hellas Verona your odds are Torino is the favorite at minus 120 a draw plays plus 240 and Hellas Verona to win is plus 350 to be honest this is going to be a toss-up game if you look at the numbers on both these teams very very similar um verona really um a loss to atalanta but it was only one nil but it should have been worse and torino falling to lazio who has been jekyll and hyde torino isn't really convincing i could easily see this game being a draw and i am actually going to call it to be a draw udinese versus genoa this has udinese as the favorites at plus 140 a draw is plus 210 and Genoa to win is plus 210 to be honest Udinese um, they haven't uh, even scored at home yet this season we've talked every time about their massive injury list that continues um, and they're just it's just not looking good for Sotil and his men as far as Genoa go they're coming off an absolute beatdown to Roma that has got to be a momentum shifter going into this game. But even Genoa away from home is a different story as they thrash Roma at home. So this one really wouldn't be surprised with a job. But I'm actually going to go against the favorites in this one and say that Genoa carry off that momentum against Roma and find the victory against Udinese. Now we get to Bologna and Empoli. So Bologna pays minus 155. You got plus 290 for drum, plus 400 for Empoli. Yes, Empoli scored their first goal of the season through Baldanzi. They finally got their victory. Okay, and Bologna got yet another stalemate, a nil-nil draw to Monza. Bologna has not been scoring a lot of goals. There's three scoreless draws in a row for Bologna. However, they are at home in this one. Empoli also not scoring a ton of goals. I am going to go with Bologna getting the job done at home to Empoli in this match. Now, Fiorentina and Cagliari. Fiorentina heavy favorites in this one minus 210 a draw plays plus 340 and Galliari to win is plus 550 but I wouldn't take that bet okay so far Galliari has only got one point on the road this season Fiorentina through um, only three matches at home are undefeated at home I look for that to continue in this one I look for Fiorentina to get the job done at home to Cagliari Sassuolo and Monza Sassuolo is at plus 125 a draw plays plus 270 and Monza plays plus 195 for the victory Sassuolo nine points all right they're going to be happy with getting nine points out of their opening round of matches here so far especially when they've got um matches in there against inter napoli juventus and atalanta so in back-to-back -back games sassuolo has taken care of juventus and now inter so they are going to be feeling very very strong going into this game all right as far as uh, monza is going to go their start, they're going to be frustrated with. They had some winnable games in there that they weren't able to get the job done. And they finished the season so strong last season that they are going to be feeling a little frustrated with their start here. But not make or break for Monza just quite 
yet okay for Sassuolo we talked about Berardi the one that sunk Inter he is red hot and flying I look for him to continue this uh, run of hot form against Monza I'm calling Sassuolo for the victory here in this match now Roma and Frosinone Roma still despite this start to the season is going to go into this game at home against Frosinone as your favorites minus 210 for Roma plus 340 for a draw and Frosinone at plus 550 to get the victory this could be a very very fun watch Roma's got to get after it they have to get a victory this is a must win for them a must win for Mourinho you would have to think I would already think that Roma is starting to look at alternatives to be honest Frosinone they'll be happy with their start getting nine points right now out of these opening six matches and uh, again with uh, wins against Sassuolo and Atalanta but more so they're just played their play is very very strong and they generate a good amount of chances and they're looking good and they're growing so they're going to be very very happy Roma is a complete 180 to that as they are going to be very very frustrated and the end could be coming for Mourinho now there's question marks all over the place the biggest thing for Roma is the fact that they can't keep the ball out of their own net all right one win in their first six absolutely embarrassed and thrashed by Genoa and allowing 11 goals in these six matches that is a huge huge knock for a Mourinho led side so Roma has it all to prove and Frosinone they've got nothing going into this game so they have no pressure on their backs whatsoever the pressure is going to be on Roma to get the victory here and this is not the time you would want to play a kickstart Frosinone and for Frosinone this is the time you would want to go into Roma to try and take them on and get something out of it when they are at at a mess right now this one <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised with a draw to be quite honest, I wouldn't be surprised with a draw. Many are going to say Roma will come out, get the job done, get the win, but I wouldn't be surprised with a draw, to be honest. Now, let's get to Atalanta Juventus. First off, De Ketelaer is a doubt for Atalanta. He may not be able to be in the squad. Your odds, plus 145 for Atalanta, plus 235 for a draw, and plus 175 for Juventus. So Atalanta are the slight favorites here. This game carries a lot of unknown. There's going to be a lot of unknown between both these teams. Juventus, we've seen the highs and we've seen the lows already. As far as Atalanta goes, we've seen them kind of sputter and we've seen them kind of drop a couple that they shouldn't have. Ultimately, they've got four wins and two losses, which isn't bad in your first opening six, but it's the two losses and how they went down that hurt Atalanta, that create this doubt that they're trying to work through. But their offense has been looking very good, being able to generate a lot of chances. As far as Juventus goes, they made some changes to the lineup, okay? And those changes look to stick. Rugani could actually stay in as part of that back three. Fajoli is set to stay in the midfield. Flaovic is set to return to the top to partner up with uh, Federico Chiesa. This is going to be an odd one. I wouldn't be surprised with this game ending in a draw, and I actually believe it will end up in a draw. Now, we've got Lecce and Napoli. We talked about the mess Napoli created for themselves just simply through their TikTok account, all right? Now they got to face Kickstart Lecce, who's still coming off a 1-0 defeat against Lecce. Uh, sorry, a 1-0 defeat against Juventus. And they really did nothing. All they did was make Juventus have to work for it and work for that winning goal, all right? They're going to have to do more against Napoli. I look for Napoli to continue with um, this kind of vengeance to get back to where they were and show that they belong up in the top again. They're not far off the pace right now. It can easily turn around, and I think this is going to be a tight race right down to the wire in Serie A. Um, Napoli fans were fuming after the nil-nil draw, okay, but now they got the 4-1 win against Udinese, and Cavara finally scoring again, Osimhen getting back into the mix. It's going to be okay. They're going to be fine. I look for Napoli to get the job done here against Lecce. As far as uh, the odds go, plus 350 to Lecce, plus 280 for a drop, minus 135 for the heavy favorites, Napoli, even on the road. Um, for me, I think Napoli's got to put that uh, nonsense behind him that happened midweek. Everybody's got to remain professional about it and move forward for the best of the team. Look for them to continue that 
this weekend and get the victory against Lecce. AC Milan and Lazio. So the odds in this one, you've got minus 130 for Milan, plus 260 for a draw, plus 360 for Lazio to get the victory. Milan's only blemish so far this season is that horror show in the Derby della Madonnina. Outside of that, they have been winning all of their matches, okay, outside of Champions League where they had a draw against Newcastle, but they're back in the win streak two in a row. Uh, and again, with Lazio, it's Jekyll and Hyde. You just don't know what you're going to get from them. They're a team that is capable of beating the absolute top team, and then they're a team that's capable of flopping against a relegation side. So you don't know what you're going to get out of Lazio. Based on this season, based on how these two teams have been playing, I'm going to say that Milan is going to get the victory here. I would expect it to be a scoreline of somewhere around 2-1, potentially 3-1 for AC Milan. Then we wrap things up with Inter taking on Salernitana away from home. Inter is going to be without Fratesi. He joins the injury list, joining Arnatovic. Okay, we're still waiting for full timetables on both these players as far as their returns go. But the favorites in this one still enter by a long shot. Odds Salernitana plus 575. A draw plus 380. Inter to win minus 240. Heavy, heavy favorites enter. And rightfully so. Salernitana still winless. Okay. Dropping one that they would again want back against Empoli midweek and really showing just how deep their struggles run. Banking on a Candreva again. Nothing against him, a journeyman through the league and whatnot, but Salernitana needs so much more help, okay? Inter, Inter's got a solid roster. They're going to want to right the ship after what happened to Sassuolo. They're going to come out strong, and they're. I think this is going to be an ugly one for Salernitana. Inter, I look to win this one convincingly, all right? So, again... Here you have it. This is going to be your standings heading into this weekend's matchup. We'll review it again as it stands. Inter and Milan tied on 15 points. Juventus just behind 13 points. Then you have Atalanta at 12. So that matchup between Juventus and Atalanta will have some implications at the top of the table. Then you have Napoli, Lecce and Fiorentina all tied at 5th, 6th and 7th position on 11 points. Okay, so again, I'm still saying... This race will go down to the wire this season in Serie A. I don't think any team is going to run away with it. Napoli fans, for all their frustrations at the start of the year and, and some of these results, they're not by any means out of the running, okay? None of these teams, I think, are going to be consistent enough to just run away with it. This is going to be a tight battle right through to the end. This weekend, the biggest one is going to be Atalanta Juve, which will have some implications at the top. As far as your Serie A leading scorers going into this weekend, here you go. Lataro Martinez is top with five. And the rest in that list, Pinamonte, Berardi, Vlaovic, Chiesa, Giroud, Osimhen, all on four goals. All right, so we'll see if any changes happen with that. Hopefully your Fanta Calcio does well. I need a big weekend for mine, all right? But that wraps up your Calcio review today. Hope you enjoyed the session, all right? Like, subscribe, follow, and we'll catch you after the weekend's round of action to recap what went down, all right? Ciao tutti and take care. Alberto signing off with another edition of Calcio Review.